thank you. Thank you, Oine. Thank you also, Marco, for your very nice introductory speech. Um, we're very happy to be here, hosted by in the wintry Tallinn. But what was most uh, important for me is that you started your speech saying innovation starts from cooperation. We couldn't be much more like-minded. And I had a very nice breakfast with uh, Andre on uh, the METC philosophy. So we're absolutely on the same line. And this is, of course, very much uh, giving me happiness and a good kickstart to set the scene for everybody. So uh, today we are here to focus on the role of the CAP national networks, or let's call them shortly national networks. Um, and the first breakout session is to get everybody on the same level, and some of you will already be at a certain level, others will start a little bit lower, so to get everybody well understanding what is ACIS and how can national networks strengthen these knowledge flows, which is the big aim of why we have uh, this ACIS uh, strategies in CAP plans. First of all, what does it mean, ACIS? What is an ACIS? It's the organization and the interaction of persons, institutions, and organizations who use and produce knowledge and innovation for agriculture and interrelated fields. This is a definition how it's in the regulation. And this concerns who? The main ACIS players are of course, farmers, foresters, advisors, researchers, their organizations, their cooperations, NGOs, networks, retailers, media, services, various ministries, because they all produce and use knowledge. And why are we aiming at such a strate strategic approach for ACIS? Is to have, a, to make or to build further on uh, a regional national innovation ecosystem by enhancing knowledge flows. And knowledge flows is the main word you have to retain from this. It's all about the knowledge flows between those ACIS players, intensifying them, and of course this will bring along also strengthening links between research and practice. We have an eight-pager written on that on the website, and you have the link here below. Now, ACIS starts with an A, and that's not by accident, and it's also not because we want to see agriculture as the sector alone to focus on. Because our A of ACIS really stands for whatever farming and rural activities automatically relate to, meaning also environment, climate, biodiversity, landscape, up until consumers and citizens, food as well as non-food systems, and also the transformation, the processing, the distribution chain. So it's very broad, it's very multi-actor. But where then come this A from ACIS from? It's because in 2008, the researchers themselves in the European Committee for Agriculture Research understood that research alone is not enough. This linear uh, originating of knowledge and innovation made by researchers that would then was supposed to trickle down to the end users that this system doesn't work anymore. We have to be more interactive, learn from each other, exchange our knowledge as well, the practical as the theoretical or research knowledge. And that's where the ACUS comes from. And for the simple reason of not confusing people, we kept the A, but be aware that it's much broader than the A of agriculture. This is an overview of how ACIS uh, is materializing in member states. And even if it's a bit from 2014, the big lines are still there. A few countries have moved a bit to the left or upper or whatever, but in big lines, it's still the same. We're doing currently new research to update it, but there are still member states, if you look at it uh, from the left, that are more fragmented, where each institution and organization is working on its own, not connected to the more integrated systems in other member states. And that's where we want to go, as much 
integrated as possible, of course, links between the different ACIS actors and organizations. And we have then on this axis from weak to strong and powerful ACIS, meaning having lots of funding, lots of attention within their country for the knowledge and innovation systems. And of course, there also we want to go as low as possible, so the best place to be is in the outer angle. But you also see, and that's why I show this picture, that Europe is very uh, diverse. We have all kinds of ACESs, and now with our ACES strategies in uh, the CAP plan, we hope to move slowly but steadily all towards that corner where we are better integrated and where there is enough funding to do what is needed for agriculture and rural areas. So our focus on ACIS is uh, because that strategy brings actors together on a structured and regular basis, really uh, systematic, hmm, the S of system, creating continuous interaction to speed up knowledge exchange, knowledge flows, innovation, and most of all, implementation into practice, because you also have this psychology effect behind. And what kind of knowledges can we differentiate? And we have support from some Horizon projects. You will hear, hear more about that tomorrow. Natalia, my colleague, will uh, tell you about that. In broad lines, we have two main types of knowledge. Um, you have the typical knowledge from science, which is written down in scientific abstracts uh, and often recognized as the only knowledge but you also have very important knowledge that lies with the practitioners that is not written down, sometimes called tacit knowledge even, but which is equally important to ensure that something is on the right road, will be applicable in, in practice, and it's this tacit knowledge that is also there, and what we aim to with this AK strategies and with this interconnection is to get the two closer together so that we come to real, applicable, realistic solutions and that we can do the necessary changes we need in our agriculture and rural areas. And this is work from Livia from the Modern Acres projects. And thank you very much, Livia is with us. She's there on the, on the side. And she also put the different terminologies here on a slide. I'm going quick on this one. Um, mainly because what we don't want is this old knowledge transfer, which is one direction, somebody who knows better than the other, who doesn't listen. We really want knowledge that is exchanged, even an advisor, the classical advisor comes to tell the farmer how to do. Even a good advisor has good ears and listens to the farmer and adapts the proposed solutions to what the farmer needs and to its, his context. So knowledge exchange is what we need. And of course, a lot of knowledge sharing and in general flows as much as possible between all our actors. So what's new in our cap uh, and the Green Deal that's now there uh, monumentally for us as a big aim to go. We need, on the one hand, continuation, because we already had our EIP, our operational groups. We were on the good way, but we also need to change and, and uh, enhance, because agriculture, for sure, will be more and more knowledge extensive, and we have more challenges. We know that in the former period, we had for more than 1 billion and more than 3,200 operational group innovation projects already. But the next CAP plan now foresees for only five years 6,600 operational groups. It triples the number of operational groups, which shows that we are on the good way and what we do is appreciated. Um, but the scope will be much larger. We're now tackling all nine CAP objectives, and that's new, including the links to society, the links to rural areas, generation renewal, and all those things. We already had a focus on environmental sustainability, on economic sustainability, but the social part was not so strongly in the past. And then we have our help from the Horizon policy with also over one billion and uh, many projects still there to come. 
Uh, as for now, until 2024, we already have uh, 352 multi-actor projects there. So we really have an increasing volume of practical knowledge that needs to be managed. And we have, as for now already, and this will even become more a variety of operational group subjects that we tackle. Some of them really help the CAP to move along. They test out CAP measures like eco schemes or environmental measures together with the end users to make those schemes as good as possible. So this is a great thing that Ireland started doing, but we have already a few other member states, Germany, the Netherlands, using their operational groups to improve the cap. And the focus on environment and climate is also there, is also quite strong already in the, in the period that we had. Now, moving to the next period, we still have this bigger picture with, on the one hand, what we do under the cap, with, on the other hand, what we do under horizon. Both have their projects that are multi-actor with a variety of actors and in particularly involving the end users. We have now obligatory innovation support services in each country and we keep this obligation in the Horizon multi-actor projects to involve operational groups as a strong recommendation. And we have our common repository where all the outcomes are put in um, you, the networks, the national network, the EU CAP network, to share this, to make this come alive, and to use this common repository to spread the results. Those nine uh, CAP objectives, you know, they are all part of sustainability. Um, and as a cross-cutting one, we have the knowledge and innovation and the ACIS strategies. The principles which we know from the past from the operational groups are still the same. We try to work along the interactive innovation model, which means collaboration, and thanks again to Marco, collaboration between various actors to make the best use of complementary types of knowledge, scientific, practical, organizational, you name it, any expertise is welcome, depending on the objectives of projects and, and uh, objectives in view of co-creating so everybody on the same level it's not the researchers that is more important than the practical side um, co-creating and this makes this psychology effect of the practitioners involved to say okay this is also my solution I want to spread it because it's good we made it together so there's also some psychological effect behind it that makes then what comes out is more ready to implement into practice and will be quickly, more quickly spread. And the network is supporting all that. Here are the legal provisions. I won't bother you too much. They are in the background document, but I have two slides pointing out the main ones. Um, on the one hand, for you as CAP networks, there is a sentence in Article 114 that really asks you that you work together with advisors, researchers within the framework of ACIS on a regular basis and also ensure that we have better advice and innovation support. And secondly, farm advice is reshaped a lot. We have an obligation now in all countries to have advisors. Uh, they need to be visible, shared on a list. Uh, they have to be impartial. Um, and also be easily found because they are very needed in all those multi-actor projects and operational groups because they can bring in practical knowledge and they are also very good multipliers. So the advisors shall be integrated within the ACIS and they have to cover all three aspects, economic, environmental and social dimensions and up-to-date technological and scientific information. That's why they need to work so closely together, as you saw in the former uh, slide. And then we also have this obligatory innovation support and an obligation to train your advisors on a regular basis. Now, these rules also have changed a little bit for CAP networks in Article 126, because there's an additional line for operational groups. We ask CAP networks to connect existing operational groups, to make them collaborate, 
and also beyond the borders, for transnational groups, for instance, um, and with Horizon. And the legal basis for this innovation support is in uh, Article 15, that's the obligation, but also the recital that is uh, linked to it is Recital 15, and that's very clear on saying this also includes that you have to capture the needs and the good ideas. These grassroots needs and good ideas should be brought up uh, into the system and worked on through innovation projects uh, or through networking. And be careful because you have been already doing a lot as CAP networks for innovation networking. Innovation networking is mostly done in groups. Of course, you have some one-to-one -one, uh, exchanges also, but innovation support is something else. It's really very individual for the project that will come from it, and it's uh, really starting from the individual owner of the idea and going through the whole uh, work to bring it to an operational group. So don't underestimate the, the budget and the efforts that are needed. Uh, Sweden has a lump sum for that, and that goes from 4,000 for a small project to 9,000 euro for a big project. So this is maybe relatively heavy for networks to do that. Um, but it's very important you work together with those innovation support services. And we still have also networks who do it themselves, um, but who get then the funding out of the operational group intervention. And we appreciate these synergies, but really you have to understand the differences between the group work and the individual work that brings uh, an idea to a project. So this is a bit in a practical way, an idea from a farmer on an ammonia-reducing pig stable, and it's the job of the innovation support service to bring the right people along, uh, a company selling bacteria products, because that was the idea of the farmer, that bacteria could help. Um, also researchers from uh, a number of institutes, farmers, and they, bring, they come together into this operational group, who had as purpose to reduce with 50% ammonia emissions. And the good news is that they managed to reduce 30% just by putting a little bit of bacteria in the manure. So how an idea from a farmer who looked very well what happened in his stable could come to something very useful. And the farm advisors, as I said, they play a, a big role because on the one hand, they can capture the needs, they can help to get this project proposal ongoing, when the project proposal is there and it is selected, the next step can start. They can help running the project. Then they can very well disseminate the results. They're in a very good place. They can talk to their other farmers. They can be trainers. They have uh, lots of roles where they can share these results. So this is also something to keep a good eye on and which should be strengthened in the next period, in this period, sorry. I'm going a little bit quick because my time is limited, but you have every, everything uh, very soon uh, for you to read on your ease. Now, mainly, everything what I said materializes in two big instruments. You have, on the one hand, knowledge in a hub, often a back office where specialist advisors uh, are linking to researchers and collect all the knowledge in a practical uh, format, and they help then the field advisors. And this is also food for the innovation support services. They can test and see if maybe the solutions are already there and it's not needed, or if they can find something that can help them there from this knowledge hub. So these are two main instruments, and you have more info through all the links here on the slide. Actions for the strategy on ACIS, you can read this on your ease. These are the four main headlines with plenty of examples. Now, two key slides I still have to go through with you. And they are linked to our second breakout group today about knowledge sources and what input for national networks exist to incentivize these knowledge flows. So first of all, we have, of course, all our operational groups existing and coming on. 
Um, and all these multi-actor projects existing, running, coming on in the future. So make use of all this. It's on the EIP website in a very condensed uh, way. And we're also preparing a big knowledge reservoir under Horizon that will be EU uh, and that will have stronger search functions uh, for you to search. So use this knowledge. Connect also with Horizon projects because there's great added value. You have to ensure that uh, you are close in interaction with the Horizon national contact points. So keep your inventory of all your operational groups and of course also your advisors. Hmm? You saw it was an obligation, up to date. And this is great material then to connect people in events. Maybe in training for farmers or for advisors, in peer-to-peer -peer events, in discussion groups, in on-farm demonstrations, on the website, with e-learning, etc., cetera, et cetera. So we're coming to what you usually do, bringing people together, but really with a purpose hmm, to improve and to come to more sustainable agriculture and rural areas. And um, you can test also these things. Now, uh, for tomorrow's breakout, we look more to how national networks can stimulate knowledge flows across the borders, among the networks, among yourselves, um, with the Horizon projects, looking for synergies. You don't have to do it all on yourself. If, if you can use a little bit from here and there, much better. Um, so make sure you intensify not your connections with contacts points, promote and make your operational groups visible across the borders so that they can link with each other, uh, follow the horizon calls and pre be proactive, but don't forget that also when horizon projects are up and running, they are still looking for operational groups to come to their events and to join whatever they are working on. So keep an eye on those and uh, give your operational groups and other ACAS actors support to join the meetings. So my message to all you is roll up your sleeves because what Einstein said is hoping for change without undertaking an action yourself is like standing in a train station and waiting for a ship to come. It doesn't happen by accident. You have to really do it. So I hope you go home with this message and uh, with all the experience you will get from your colleagues here uh, today and tomorrow and uh, start really rolling up your sleeves. I'm going through this because you can all read that. Uh, just draw your attention to the second background document where there's an annex which lists what you as networks can do, how you can integrate advisors and how you can link to Horizon. So thanks a lot, and we hope that we can speed up creativity and practice application and have this better connectivity and quicker circulation of information. Thank you, and wish you very good two days uh, to get deeper into this. <laughs>